I'm Denise Spade, 141 Penny Point Road, and I'm a teacher in the chip and system. I've been teaching here for 22 years and um, taught a lot of your children. And I'm just sitting here listening, and I just have fear that, and I don't want to say it's too soon, because I understand what Mr. Bagani is saying about it. These are um, being looked at at the, at the state and federal level, that you know that might be something we should be thinking about in chip as part of our system. But part of it that um, scares me a little bit is that I just feel that Tiverton has just now undertaken a lot of good initiatives. I really feel good about the new district strategic plan that's been put together. There's, I'm the mentoring coordinator for the district, and there's a big part of mentoring in there, which is, which is part of the new induction program, which um, Dr. Gist has really been pushing and really wants to see the districts do more of. We have a good mentoring program. Um, part of our strategic plan is the evaluation. I don't think you can have any sort of merit pay discussion without a good evaluation tool, and we desperately need that. Um, as a teacher, I see curriculum changes being made. We're just now thinking about our curriculum. Science, I'm a science teacher. That needs change. We're doing it. It's getting done. I see um, administrators, our curriculum director, people working to get these things done, and the teachers in the schools. And I just have a fear that if we embark on a, on a different proposal and, and go a different way, that these things are not going to get accomplished. They're just beginning. Their strategic plan has just been put together. Committees are being form, form, formed. And I just think that you know resources and time would probably be better allocated at this point to make sure that these things are accomplished, to make sure we get a new evaluation tool, to make sure that um, you know, the good programs that we have continue. That curriculum is, is put together. And I think that those are the things we also need to base teacher merit on. You know, they have, you have to have a have strong curriculum so that the teachers have that to teach. You have to have um, good evaluation tools. People need to be trained, to whatever, you know, wherever the evaluators are. So I just wanted to make the point that as I'm listening to this, I'm, I'm, I'm just hopeful that it doesn't supersede some of the initiatives that are already in place that seem to be make us very hopeful and, and very feel very good about what's happening in Tiverton right now and that a lot of teachers have participated in and given other time to help formulate these things. And I just hope that those initiatives don't get lost and that we don't put those aside to embark on this new um, proposal that's been put out there. Thank you for the very, very nice voice in this discussion here. And I, I want to assure you that this is not to derail what we are doing and to take focus away from what's important. But to simply, in my, in, in my heart, this is to be proactive, to do something which, when, when you hear these things coming in our directions, it's better to think about this in advance. Because, for example, when you talk about the evaluation system, Obviously, this evaluation system, whatever we are going to propose, why are we working on this? Uh, maybe we should, I'm sorry, Mike, maybe we should listen to Mr. Burke and say, well, let's wait until Stale tells us what it is, and then we'll tailor what we have to match what their guidelines are. Uh, no, we were going to work on this. We just put it a little bit on hold. So we want to do the best. We want to do what's the best for the community, and obviously, we have to live within rules and regulations which are imposed on us by state. So this is not something that we are going to pull the trick and now say, oh, and here it is, and that's what we are going to do to you. I think a lot of this, um, a, a lot of this discussion and is based on fear, because that, let's, let's prove how it does not work somewhere else and, and, and how much money it costs and all of these things. And, and I acknowledge all of that, but well, let, let me just describe a system, and then I will tell you where I'm coming from. Uh, let us assume that it's going to work like this. That at some point, that's not my plan, but let's, let's, let us assume that we fantasize for a moment. That we, we all get together, and people who are specialists in particular fields, like teachers, um, for example, in your case, this will be science. You say, let's just figure out what defines quality and excellence. This is evaluation piece. In, in my field. This might be somewhat grade dependent. It could uh, depend on the type of science, but between physics, chemistry, 
or science, general science in, in, in elementary school, in middle school. Um, these things are pretty common. These people kind of agree pretty much what defines excellence. Then the next question is, and how do we measure this? We don't have testing. Uh, what are the ways you measure your students' performance? Is this in somewhat related to how you achieve the outcomes of what you are trying to do? Because outcomes are defined and probably measured differently for people who teach art versus for people who teach math. Uh, there are different curricula, st curricula standards for different types of subjects. How does this impact the whole thing? Now, if anyone feels comfortable with this, someone says, you know, I would mind being measured against these criteria because I, I believe that that's what we're supposed to be doing. And I truly believe that this is achievable. This is not something someone will do to us. This is something what we do to ourselves. And we are going to look at this from the perspective of there is a teacher who might need help, who does not match these particular expectations. We will figure out how to bring them there, what, what, what kind of methods we are going to do to actually bring them to that level. This is the evaluation piece. Now, this could be different for different subjects, maybe for different levels. Now, on top of this, the question, how are we going to evaluate this? Well, what if we do this, that there is a group of teachers who have a lot of experience. For example, this could be teachers who are known, could be uh, department chair in high school, uh, could be some senior teacher who has a lot of, level, uh, a lot of experience in uh, a particular grade level. And say, let's have a specific committee, which at the end of the year, each teacher is going to submit some form of a report. In this report, they will say, and just wait a moment about this report because people get scared of bureaucracy, is that what did I do during this particular year? And this committee is going to look at this report. It will be done based on some guidelines, what's supposed to be in those. Stuff. And will determine if students achieve, if, if the teacher achieved particular level, let's say excellent, satisfactory, very good, in that particular category. For example, teaching, based on what? That criteria which we have. Where? In science or in art. Okay. These group of teachers who develop the standards, they will also monitor their own performance. Is it possible? I believe it is. Now this group of teachers will make a recommendation based on this. There is some form of criteria, say if you scored excellent in two categories and so on and so on, you are very highly recommended. Now in the system, let's say the school committee at some point, please don't scream, but let's say that teachers, and it's not going to happen this year, but let's say there is a 3% salary increase, or 3% increase to the payroll. The 3% increase to the payroll <coughs> might be distributed by some formula which says 1% is across the board to compensate for inflation and things like this. 1.5% is put into one pot which is called merit 1, and half percent is put into another pot which is merit 2. Merit 1 is basically to eliminate everyone who actually is so underperforming that it does not deserve to get it. Great majority of the people will get merit one. Merit two, much smaller, is awarded to people who excel, who are, who are exceptional in what they do. Maybe, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 teachers across the district would get merits two. When merit one, maybe all except two or three. And from that particular money, well, people get their salary increase. Now, what kind of categories would you have? <coughs> What's important to the district? One is teaching. You cannot go without this. 